Hello folks, you're very welcome along to the Red 78, a Monster podcast for Monster fans. So that you could join us. My name is Rory O'Hagan from Off The Ball, joined by Monster legends Alan Quinlan and Fiona Hayes to discuss Monster's win in the rain over the Ospreys and a huge, huge injury list as we get ready to head up to Dublin in a massive, massive game with Leinster at Oak Park. A lot to come on today's show. Fiona, Alan, great to see you as always. How are you guys? Good Rory, good, better form this week, even though um, even though I had a last with my, a one point last minute last with my own team, um, I'm still not over it, but we all went and watched Munster, it was directly on the Munster game, so it cheered us all up a little bit anyway, watching them bounce back. Losing my point last play of the game, well it must have been like heartbreaking, pull your hair out kind of stuff. So. You wouldn't even believe it, I won't talk about referees, but... But you will. I, I, you won't, you I, won't talk about it, but you will. You're going to touch like man now after this podcast. Like. I'd say, I, well, he laid into me at one stage. I went down anyway. Someone, uh, I, 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 I just quickly tell you, someone, someone got, um, we got crunched in a scrum and her head was tar- a new second row. We were giving her a blast or whatever. Sure, he can let them play on. It's, the whole scrum was down and he let him take a quick tap like you're not allowed so I, I marched on to to let him know that and the, the the next break of play I brought a bottle of water with me and he was like I don't care if you bring it on water you're not supposed to be on here coach I was like okay I have to go now <laughs> <laughs> Never put me in my place <laughs> Quinny how are you well, well, I'm very good thanks Rory yeah um, conditions were horrendous were, were, were they bad for your match Oh, oh my God! It was it was horrific standing on the sideline. You know, everyone had the little hand warmers, the subs anyway, and it was it was it was pretty bad. But in saying that, when I watched the the start of the Munster game, I think it was far worse than Cork. Yeah, there's plenty to discuss about that Ospreys game, all right? Yeah, the wind and the rain, the playing a game in an orange weather warning. Luckily, it was on a 4G pitch, I guess. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have gone ahead. Plenty of comments reaching us, Fiona, on the show just about that game, I suppose, about the, the big one with Leinster coming up on the horizon. Yeah, some uh, good comments coming in. A lot more positive this week, which is great to see. Um, You have Phil Quinlan saying, Jack Crowley, this was my favourite, was like Noah leading the way through the biblical floods to victory. He didn't even need to borrow a pair of goggles from the stands. Fair play. And Poole, good win in the horrendous conditions. Great response from last week. Sadly, didn't get to the game as it was torrential rain down and went in West Cork. Just had to watch it on the team. But also acknowledging biggest worry, that growing injury list. Joe has Sean O'Brien returning early from a merging tour. Very welcome given the current injuries. Eamon says three games in and our injury list is already, already ridiculously long again. Is there something wrong with our physical conditioning or is it just bad luck? Um, last couple then we'll say Trev had some fab performances, some not so. Kendellum was excellent for Ireland. Hopefully no more bad injuries this weekend. Ideally in a low scoring sneaky win in a great occasion. But seriously stuff the occasion. I'll take a 3-0 uh, thriller in a hurricane. And lastly, Christopher Murphy, who do Munster have to start praying in order to stop the injuries from piling up? What do you make on that, Quinny? Um, especially uh, the questions around, you know, is it something they're doing in training? Because I know they changed up the preseason this year in particular. Um, I suppose it's easy to that that's where you'd naturally go when you've when you have have the injuries. There was a bit of talk about that last year, particularly around November, December, um, when there was a lot of injuries cropping up. I don't know. It's 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 is it luck? Um you know, Ali Yeager is a stinger in the shoulder, neck area. So I don't know how can you say that's something to do with training. Yeah. Peter Mahoney, again, we don't know, speculating on what the injury it looked like, a, a hip or a quad injury or something like that. Um, I think they were saying hamstring, Quinny, and oh, Peter Mahoney. Yeah, yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah, he was lying on his back and they were kind of, he was propelling himself up to see. Yeah. I don't know. It's... Uh, it's easy. It's the easiest way to go. If there's a lot of soft tissue injuries, um, yeah, maybe it's something to do with the conditioning or or overtraining and stuff like that. You can get evidence of that. But you know, all the players are monitored nowadays, and uh, their load is checked as regards how much work they're doing. But um, yeah, it's just 
And we'll end up, we'll obviously talk about Leinster and, and the task ahead and how tough that is uh, at the end of the podcast. But when you go through the amount of injuries that Munster have, it's 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 a lot. And um, so I don't know. Uh, saying prayers and uh, my I you know what? <laughs> my mother, my mother's holy water maybe is missing. <laughs> that's probably the the ingredient that they need. But um, yeah, as I said, if it's if it's um. If it's a lot of soft, soft tissue injuries, then in any sport, you can look towards the amount of training you're doing or the players need rest, they're breaking down. But again, some of the injuries, it's it's hard. You, you go back to that Leinster game last year when you Dermot Barron broken foot, um, a dog bow, Achilles, um, Dave Kilcoyne's shoulder, all in the one mm-hmm. match. You know, they're freakish kind of injuries. So um, it's a pity because um, I think we all would agree and people outside of Munster would probably agree a fully fit Munster but no one has has everybody available every match but again there's a lot of absentees there that make a huge difference to your bench and your squad and your preparation your training you know Shane Daly's won over in Italy it's coming down on his wrist isn't it so um, yeah it's it's frustrating and it's difficult from at the moment and they have to kind of navigate their way through a tough period is there a child of Prague equivalent from a rugby injuries that we can put out ahead of Saturday, no? <laughs> Queenie's mam and certainly know that, I'd say, anyway. <laughs> a few holy medals or something, but uh, yeah, it's a pity because, uh, but look, it's part and parcel of sport, but you just think the, the amount of injuries they've had, it's it's pretty unfortunate for them and uh, you don't want to be putting it down to, uh, you know, making excuses or saying this is why mm. we didn't play well. I think we know where the level monster are at there. They could be a very good team who can challenge if they mm. have people fit and available. You know, Rory Scannell has an ankle injury. Thomas Ahern had that knee injury. Um, you know, there's a lot. Dave Kilcoyne is coming back from his shoulder. Paddy Patterson, a cruciate. Roman Salano, a problem with his knee. Like, the list is is crazy. Like, Liam Coombs, hamstring, Patrick Campbell, shoulder, Dermot Kilgallen, hamstring. The hamstrings and the calves that they're the they're the yeah. they're the areas that um there's something you know not wrong I think but maybe uh individually issues with people around their conditioning or whatever I don't know um it's tough it's frustrating but they've got to you can't yeah. focus and talk about it. we can talk about it of course and they've just got to get on with it but it's hard to try and prepare for for big games when when. You're looking around saying, particularly in the backs, who's available this week? You know, Sean O'Brien is coming back early from the uh, the Emerging Ireland Tour because they need outside backs, really, for the weekend. We'll get into that Leinster game, and I suppose Dean Villas in a bit more detail later on in the pod. But first off, you know, that win over Ospreys on Saturday, 23 now in Musgrave Park in the wettest, windiest conditions I think I've ever seen. The amount of people who text me said that they weren't going to go to the game when they saw the rain outside. It was flooding all over Cork. would have been hard to get to Virgin Media Park anyway. But once they dug it out, they got the win and it was much needed considering, I suppose, the, the hammering they took after losing to Zebra the previous week. Yeah, look, and I think the thing they'll take away from the game the most is that nil, because we were on there last week, lads, and we were chatting about, and even the week before we were chatting about like the defence and I suppose lack of those connections at times. Yes, you can look at the weather and say it probably was hard to attack in that but I, I thought Munster's defence, their line speed was a lot better. And for me in particular to... Obviously having tied burn back is a huge part of it, but to have eight turnovers... Um, I think it was last week did only two as a defensive system when you're getting those turnovers it really kind of brings the energy and it brings that buzz into a team and you could see it meant a, a lot to them so it was really good from from that side of things to be able to see them put in a good defensive performance especially I suppose questioning at times um, their tackles was it was another thing you know we we'd said there was far too many missed tackles soft tackling certainly didn't have that I think they had twelve missed tackles all game so they really probably spent a good week I'd say I'd imagine solidly working on defence and I'd say they knew probably had a little idea that the weather wasn't going to be the best as well so their set piece was something I thought was excellent Niall Scannell I thought 
was brilliant in, in what he played. They had 12 out of 12 line outs. And just in general, it was one of those days where you had to look after the ball. You had to make your tackles and you had to be the first to bounce up to your feet. And I felt Munster had super energy and they were, and they were about the place trying to really go after the Ospreys. Yeah, kind of horrendous conditions, obviously, for the game, which you have to admire, I suppose, the way Munster dug it out and got that bonus point win. Yeah, I think the attitude was uh, something we, we mentioned and spoke about. And, and when you do lose a game, it's not a personal attack on anybody, but I think the attitude needs to be a lot better in your, in your whole application across the board. Uh, Fiona mentioned the defence and, um, you know, Munster priding themselves on defence. That brilliant run they went on last year and the previous year, their defence um, brought put them in a position to win it. Last year, finishing top... Um, they conceded 318 points in 18 games. So that was the lowest of any team in the in the league. Um, that tells its story. So for Munster, they need to be a hard team to beat and then ho- rely on the improvements that we've seen in the attack in the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, they're not going to get everything perfect and uh, far from it. I think we, you know, talking about the injuries and having the profile of players available and all that kind of stuff will certainly help them. Um, but uh, the improvement from last week was 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 huge. I think the weather conditions and the ability to play good rugby suited them in a sense that, you know, You've seen in the last few years, Munster want to play with wit and they want to attack and, and put pace in their game. But of all nights the other night, as a forward in particular, um, it was a chance to really get stuck into the opposition. You know that there's not going to be, it's not going to go wit to wit to wit all the time. You're going to get a lot of direct contact. There's, there has to be one out runners. There has to be a lot of collisions around the breakdown. There's going to be a lot of set piece. So it kind of suited the Munster pack that they needed to kind of uh, step up and, and roll up the sleeves a bit. And they did. Um, you know, there's a couple of stats from the week before, you know, Munster lost eight turnovers. Zebra won eight, Zebra won eight turnovers the week before um, to one of Munster. Munster had eight win turnovers won this week to one of Ospreys. So they kind of flipped that breakdown issue around. And it's not a t- technique thing because you could ask me, well, is that a technical thing? Is it something they need to practice or get better? I think Fiona might agree with me here. It is it is an attitude thing. It is a big attitude thing. Like these players are not going to be t- technically poor at, at cleaning out breakdowns. It's an attitude thing. So uh, you can imagine during the week, there was a lot of honest words. I would have said they would have been very angry with themselves and the coaches would have been pretty angry. So I think they galvanized themselves. And when I say it suited them, the weather, it suited them that, you know, the first thing I would do as a coach is, is go at the attitude and, and the desire and the aggression levels and stuff like that. And rugby is a physical sport. Um, you have to be physically right and emotionally right. So I think they got that right at the weekend and they deserve a lot of credit because it would have been a tough week. And I've experienced those weeks myself as a player. It's hard to kind of, you need people around you to kind of obviously give you a kick up the backside, but get you fired up again. You've got to reignite yourself and uh, um, you can only control what's in front of you. Learn from what's behind in a sense. So I'm sure the video clips and all that kind of stuff would have been harsh learning for people. But, you know, it was a much better performance. Um, 12 missed tackles. It's way down on what it was. It was in the 20s in the first two, two league games. Um, again, the Ospreys couldn't really play. Munster couldn't really play themselves with wit and attack. But um, 12 from 12 in the lineouts, again, that that's their little things for me that are important here. So you win all your lineouts. Your scrum is pretty dominant, um, very dominant. Um, you're keeping your penalty count under 10. It was nine against Munster. I think there was a few at the end. Um, but the post-contact meters would indicate, yeah, you get a ball and you've got to you've got to run into into traffic, heavy traffic. Are you going to get a little bit of step? Are you going to keep the legs alive? All that kind of stuff. Their post contact meters were two hundred and fourteen meters, as opposed to the Ospreys were ninety meters. And this is in a game where 
possession was nearly 50 50 Munster had 52 percent possession they had 48 so Ospreys had a fair bit of ball and they only made 90 meters post contact meters whereas Munster made 214 so they're the things I would focus in on the set piece the carries aggressive carries energy to get there quickly not allowing Jack Morgan and and you know the Ospreys players get turnovers. They'd won turnover uh, from at the breakdown. So, you know, a lot of that stuff, yeah, it's not solely attitude, Rory. It's not solely, oh God, we've got to get our attitude right. They they I'm sure they would have, you know, looked at it deeply themselves, but it was much improved and they needed that kind of a performance. <laughs>